Hi, I'm Keely, also known as Kelly. And I'm Feely, also known as Alex. Welcome to our corner of the Shire, where we will show you how to bring Middle Earth into your daily life to keep you a happy, happy hobbit. hobbit. I'm Tom Bombadil. And I'm Farmer Maggie. And we're gonna go look at some mushrooms. Good. White spores, white mushrooms. Or white gills, white mushrooms, not spores. That's a bad thing. The spores are when they first start growing. The spores are, are the little microscopic, not microscopic, but the tiny little... Like these guys? What should we call them? Yeah, what are those, like, those little lines? That's right? the gills. The spores are in the gills. That's how they reproduce. Oh, oh okay. okay. Yeah. So the gills, yeah, not the spores. Okay, so you want you don't want this to be. White. Yeah, white is not good. You should, it's a thing about the, like the agarics. I'm not sure this is an agaric, but it's like the white button mushroom. Yeah. Store and the brown spore or yeah, brown yeah, gill. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What happens if you eat them? The Those white ones? gills. Yeah. Uh, that's like the death cap and the destroying angels. Okay. So you'll die? Yeah, there's a few that will kill you and those will kill you. I don't want a dog eating these. That's actually a good point. Uh, death caps will just get, when they're super old, they'll be like perfectly plain. Like they, they never like perfect. convex like that, they'll just be like totally black. Okay. okay. And they're kind of like greenish, light white greenish hue. Sometimes like the top center will sound like a greenish hue. Like a really pale greenish hue. That, that, yeah, that's one of the Rooslers. You can see it's real thick and meaty. It looks yeah. like seafood. Yeah, it does. Those real, real deep gills. And they always, pretty much always turn convex when they get older. Oh, They're always, like they yeah. almost make a, like a bowl. Okay. They don't totally have that like, you know, classic cap. So those are okay to eat? Uh, no. They don't taste very good. <laughs> yeah, they're just... just Rooslers are kind of like the, one of the most common things. They're just everywhere. And they get huge, so you get excited when you see them. Like a big bump, and then you get there and it's nothing. Another Roosler. Uh, there's tons of them. Like the only right, area where these guys grow. Did you already finish breakfast? Oh, yeah. it's very, very mm -hmm. That might be. You have some breakfast left on your head. Some I was saving and protect on last night. Gosh. Okay. People, will, from what I read, if this is what I thought it was, they say the middle, the actual stem's too hard to eat. And, uh, they like to saute the top and butter. Really? Hmm. So I'm not sure. Generally, a hollow stem is not a good thing. Those are associated with amanitas all the time. But these are, don't, these aren't, I don't see those amanitas with the, with the cottony top like that. Um, so the stem had a hollow spot in the center? Yeah, you can kind of see it. Oh, yeah. It's like a tube. Mm -hmm. um, and the white spore again, or the white gill. Okay. It's not generally something that's good. How did you learn? Uh, I learned from my friend Dario. Yeah, I, 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 so I guess a friend or apprentice, but more or less. And then just got really stoked on it and just read tons. And just went out and just, you know, walked in the woods all the time. <laughs> just like what you're doing, essentially, and just finding stuff and finding out what it is. Okay. Do you have any ID books or anything like that? Just um, yeah, the classic, Mushrooms Demystified. Okay. David Aurora. Okay. It's kind of the, kind of the Bible in a lot of ways. Yeah. Certain things are, may have changed, like um, scientific things for certain stuff. For the most part, it's pretty, at least for this area, because it's in the UC Santa Cruz guy. So uh -huh. For the Central Coast, it's, it's pretty definitive. Something that makes me very easy. It's like a turtle shell. Huge factor. And some beliefs, too, it'll. Big sponge will like just go right into the stock. Okay. But look at that, like a porcini or a 
any of the good bleeds in the sponge. It's like a separate, the cap's totally separate, and the bullet would go up. Go and up, and, mm-hmm. yeah, okay. So this one isn't edible. That's fine, I'm just curious about them. Yeah, no, that's the thing. I, I started by, you know, looking for Puccini's and Cantrell's, and I'm just like, holy, <laughs> they're all so cool. Yeah. And the fact that they're just cri- like critical to any forest health, I mean, it's yeah. really no forest without, without much around mycelium, but much. Yeah, yeah exactly. Where mycelium is key. Yeah. Like, Sometimes, if you like, if it's a really mushroom material, you can like dig into the topsoil and you can see like the mycelial web. It's mm-hmm. So cool. The whole whole little ball of the white. Yeah, the exactly. White, yeah. Or the yellow, or depending. Yeah, exactly, depending. I'm surprised there's not. So is is that under the humus, like? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I don't know how deep, like a foot or something. But yeah, it's kind of I guess in the topsoil. Outside, those Park. I think, I think you said they're either ink caps uh, uh-huh. or mycenas, okay. which is the family. Or, okay, yeah, they're cool looking, mm-hmm. but they're not. We don't want to eat these either. No, they're part of the LBM family, the little brown mushrooms. Yeah, <laughs> so what's the difference between mushrooms and then the fungus that grows like on the trees like this? Um, I don't know specifically. I mean, some mushrooms are wood eaters. There's a so like the porcinis and the ruslos. That's they all exist with the mycelial web. I think they're mycorrhizae. And then the ones there's you know oyster mushrooms and whatnot. They eat uh, the carbon from dead trees huh. instead of being like a. like the relationship between the roots and the... So the the ones that form the web, are they feeding off of dead roots? The, like the ones underground? Yeah. They get their nutrients from, they have like a like a symbiotic relationship with the tree roots. Okay. So in turn the trees get a, you know, a, their nutrients get broke down a bit more. Turn on the humic acids? Yeah, exactly. And uh... I'm not exactly sure what the mycelium eats, but... Huh. Or if it does eat. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, one's hard. The two are different. Yeah. They're right near each other. Yeah. Well, actually, it, they could be totally the same, but as it gets waterlogged, yeah, it's older. That's true. It gets older. Yeah. It's got that hole. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we'll get cool. yeah. Um... I would say that those are definitely these are definitely honey mushrooms. Those ones on the left. Yeah, because they've got a the thing that would look similar is a jack o' lantern, a western yeah. jack o' lantern, but they don't have a, a veil, and you can see underneath those have a, a real defined uh-huh. little veil. Fruit fungus. There's oh, actually, yeah. That, with the old fruit fungus, yeah. and that, if you have that, then you can actually eat the mushrooms from the fungus, but it's killing your tree in the process. So it's like yeah, I think I have heard something associated with the oak, uh, oak root fungus and the honey mushroom. And I know, too, you don't want to eat them if they're growing on uh, hemlock. <laughs> because they can... I don't think they'll kill you, but they just say... I'm too afraid to eat anything now. <laughs> And Every give mushroom. you liver failure and Every kidney failure. Is poisonous. And, yeah. <laughs> that's Americans, that's pretty much their belief is they think you have lost your mind if you go out collecting mushrooms. <laughs> Even a big porcini, they're like, oh, no, no, no. I don't want that. And they go to a restaurant and buy like $18 porcini ravioli. I know. <laughs> but it's funny, our culture is so terrified. You go to Russia, or most of Europe for that matter, and they're just, you know, crazy for mushrooms and totally. Unafraid because they learned from an early age. The guys in Russia, there's like 17 different surnames that relate to the collecting of mushrooms. Right? Oh wow! Yeah. Russians are they? I mean, they eat the poisonous stuff. Like they'll just boil it for like 70 hours. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's mind blowing. That's really. dedication. Yeah, like the Satan bully, which is this giant psychedelic-looking purple-blue monster bully, and it's totally deadly poisonous. Yeah. They boil it, and you have like 70 hours, and somehow leach the toxins out and eat it. Seems like. It's definitely a belief. Frog. 
A frog? Mm -hmm. Or a toad, I should say. Should place him on top of a mushroom. Oh yeah, that's a tree frog. Is it? A little fat one. It looks like sulfur tough, but usually they're uh, yeah, they grow on deadwood. There might be a piece of deadwood under there. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, the pretty sure that's sulfur tough. Those are really pretty. Yeah, and they grow in like that perfect little. Spencer, I think your Tolkien nickname should be Tom Bombadil. <laughs> <laughs> That works for me. <laughs> right. Peaks, you're soggy. It goes where the sun kind of extends it out like that and dries it. Farmer Maggot slash Boromir. <laughs> and we're gonna go mushroom hunting or something. Okay. Alright, whenever you're ready. I don't know. <laughs> don't they say it smells kinda like apricot -y? I don't know actually. I have no idea. It kinda smells fishy to me. <laughs> So how like you could poison an enemy, like take poison spores and put it on the paper and send him a letter, like back in the day. That's where my mind immediately goes. How can you murder someone? <laughs> you can take spore prints. And you get the color of the spore. Oh, cool. cool. You just get a piece of white paper. Um, get one that has like an open cap. And just put on the white paper, put a bowl over it, and like six hours you take it off and it like stains the paper with this color of the spore. Huh? Yeah. You can do it on like shirts and you get all crazy. People that have survived eating death caps, because they say the flavor is amazing. Oh, really? Yeah. The people that do survive, you know, that they have like full like kidney failure and. Oh, geez. So a bite might do that, but I'd 